Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Luca Ferrazin, and I'm here to talk about the first priorities in uh, coughing dogs. First of all, what is cough? Cough is uh, a beautiful mechanism that nature put in place to protect the airways or the respiratory system from potentially noxious material that can penetrate the respiratory tree causing pathologies. And uh, it is designed with this uh, sequence of events that start from the stimulation of coughing receptors caused by the inhaled material, followed by a deep inspiration and then a forceful expiration against the closed glottis. During this phase, the intrathoracic pressure increases dramatically, and therefore, when uh, in, the, in the, the subsequent phase, the glottis opens, we got this forceful explosive maneuver that pushes the previously inhaled material out of the airways. By, and by doing this, the airways are kept clean. And uh, once the receptors have been stimulated, the message is delivered to the medulla where we've got in the brain, where we got a cough centers that elaborate the reflex. And this is under influx of uh, cerebral control, endogenous opioids, exogenous opioids, and many other factors. And when we reach a certain threshold, then uh, the cough mechanism starts by enrolling all the muscles that are involved in the respiration with a deep inspiration and then forceful expiration against the closed glottis and then eventually the explosive uh, expiratory effort and that with the typical sound of coughing. The receptors are distributed differently along the airways and the highest density of coughing receptors are located in the upper airways, primarily at the level of the larynx and first tracheal rings. And these are exquisitively mechanoreceptors. So they respond to mechanical stimulation, like for example, the penetration of a foreign body that forces this, uh, the wall of, uh, of the respiratory tract causing the irritation of these receptors. We've got also receptors in deeper areas of the respiratory tree. In the bronchi, for example, we've got a lower density of receptors, but receptors that um, can still respond to mechanical stimulation, but also receptors can respond to a chemo stimulation. So like inhalation of, uh, of uh, ammonia, for example, or, uh, or smoke. So the protection is uh, um, present also for this time this type of potentially uh, noxious material. And then finally, in the very deep part of the lungs, so the level of the respiratory bronchioles and uh, alveoli, uh, small uh, bronchioles in general, we do not have coughing receptors. So we cannot stimulate cough from these areas. This is extremely important because if we understand the origin of the coughing reflex, then we can target the um, affected area and therefore uh, um, decide the most successful diagnostic investigation. In uh, these two videos, we've got coughing dogs and the one on the left side, these old Labradors, is affected, this old Labrador is affected by chronic bronchitis. So this is by definition and chronic inflammation of the airways with excessive production of mucus, which tends to stagnate in uh, the respiratory tree. Therefore, this dog needs to have a deep inspiration, representing this graphic as a blue line, followed by a forceful expiration, with the typical explosive maneuver, typical of cough. And let's see the video. <coughs> and if you have noticed, this dog is also swallowing at the end of each cough because it's bringing up this uh, thick mucus that is stagnating in the airways. So you can understand immediately by watching this video how important is the cough reflex for these patients in order to keep the airways functioning. On the right side, we got a, a puppy 
which is presenting again with coughing, but the cough this time is not preceded by a deep inspiration and is characterized by a battery of very rapid expiratory reflexes. The difference between uh, these um, two um, types of cough is that the first one is originating from the bronchi, exactly where the problem of this dog is, it's called chronic bronchitis, while the one on the right is originating from upper airways, from the larynx and trachea, because this, this puppy is affected by kennel cough, which is by definition a laryngotracheitis. And nature designed this uh, very cleverly because uh, if you have, for example, a foreign body that's trying to enter the airways, the very first part that will be stimulated will be exactly the level of the larynx, the first trachea rings. And therefore, the last thing you want to see in these cases is a deep inspiration, because that would cause an inhalation of the foreign body. But simply by observing the type of cough, you can understand whether the problem is in the lower airways, like in the bronchi here, or in the upper airways, like in the puppy. But cough, as I said at the beginning, is elaborated, the mechanism is elaborated by the center of cough, which is in the brain. And uh, until we have a stimulation of uh, um, coughing receptors not reaching the threshold, we do not see the cough. So any extra stimulus that is added to this uh, already present stimulation of coffee receptors will trigger the mechanism. So in other words, if we have a patient like the one in this video with a chronic airway disease, but is not coughing, we just need to add a little bit of pressure to the chest or by palpating the trachea to add the extra stimulus that will cause coughing. And we will see it in this video. Now, with all this knowledge, then we can understand all the most common causes of coughing in dogs. A very common cause, which is not very well known, is the so-called post-nasal drip syndrome. And this is caused by um, a chronic rhinosinusitis, and these patients tend to have um, a very clear nasal discharge caused by the um, chronic inflammation, excessive swallowing, coughing and sneezing. And uh, in this example, this uh, clinical case demonstrates how challenging the diagnosis can be at times. This was an already old whippet with a history of excessive swallowing, chronic coughing, and occasional sneezing. But because he had also a heart murmur, the vet decided to treat this dog as a congestive heart failure. But you see on the x-rays in the middle that the heart is not enlarged, we do not have vasal um, congestion, we don't have congestion of the veins in these lungs, and uh, we do not have pulmonary edema. This dog had instead um, this uh, post-nasal drip syndrome complicated uh, later on by a mild degree of pneumonia. And this dog responded very well just to nebulization, humidification of the environment without any cardiac drug that was given wrongly because that this dog did not have heart failure. Another common cause of cough in people, as, as well in people as in dog, is the gastroesophageal reflux, which is the activation of esophageal sensory receptors that are responsive to the gastric acid coming uh, with the reflux. And as you can see in uh, this uh, story of this, uh, of this uh, young, uh, relatively young dog, nine-year-old Staffy, um, the dog received a long list of medication, starting from uh, drugs to treat heart failure, moving then to antibiotics, anti-inflammatory drugs, antiparasites. But in reality, 
the dog had a gastroesophageal uh, issue. And you can see on the right side, the image coming from a gastroscopy that shows these ulcers and bleeding at the level of the esophagus near the cardia. So this dog responded very well to anti-acids, but obviously did not respond well to all the other medications that are listed here in this slide. So that's another important pathology to keep in mind in the differential diagnosis of coughing dogs. And uh, as you know, cough is very often a attributed to heart failure and these dogs receive um, amongst other medications receive ACE inhibitors. However, ACE inhibitors can actually be a cause of cough and it's a very well-known problem in people where at least 20% of human patients will cough after receiving uh, uh, ACE inhibitors, simply because the ACE inhibitors will increase the concentration of bradykinin, which is precursors of uh, arachidonic acid and nitric oxide, which is obviously cause of inflammation and coughing people. In dogs, probably the percentage of uh, dogs coughing in response to administration of ACE inhibitors is less common, but something to keep in mind anyway. And then finally, cigarette smoking is a, a very important problem in people. As people smoking are predisposed to cough, and especially um, heavy smokers tend to have a chronic cough due to, to a chronic um, bronchitis due to um, the smoke inhalation. But it is well known now that even dogs living near smokers can inhale um, the cigarette smoke. And we believe that this is another possible irritation, cause of irritation that can induce cough. In the video here, we see a dog that is coughing because of cigarette smoking. Bennett! Bennett, dinner! Obviously, this was a joke, but it's good because it keeps us uh, reminded this um, uh, problem of uh, irritation in the home environment that can cause cough in dogs. So how about cough caused by heart disease? This is reported in most veterinary textbooks and often attributed to the presence of pulmonary edema or the compression of the airways caused by the enlarged heart or the enlarged left atrium or sometimes even because of the edema of the bronchial mucosa. And uh, because of this, cough often prompts treatment for congestive heart failure, giving diuretics and other drug medication, which is very often the wrong approach. For example, here we see this uh, dog that he's in congestive heart failure. You can see on the X-ray in the middle, a very large heart, trachea is elevated, we've got a, a very uh, convincing alveolar pattern in the caudal dorsal lung fields. The vessels are prominent, indicating venous congestion. But as you can see, this um, Doberman with dilated cardiomyopathy and congestive heart failure is not coughing. You can see instead very prominent um, abdominal effort. The elbows are abducted from the chest. The neck is extended, open mouth breathing, typical of severe dyspnea. But we know that because we know that there are no coffee receptors in the alveolar wall, and therefore fluid in the alveolar space cannot trigger cough. So what is the cause of cough in cardiac patients? Is it the pulmonary edema? Very unlikely because of the um, elements that we have already uh, analyzed in the previous slides, or is it the cardiomegaly, the enlarged heart, or is the presence of airway disease? We've done a study to determine which one is the most important factor. And in this study, we examined 206 dogs with mitral valve disease, and we found that only approximately 50% of these dogs had um, cough as a clinical presentation. And of those coughing, we found that only 27% on thoracic radiography had evidence of congestive heart failure why 68% had evidence, evidence of airway disease. But most importantly, all dogs, 100% of them, had evidence of uh, tachypnea dyspnea with uh, the presence of pulmonary edema. So that is the main 
parameter we should evaluate rather than coffin. And when we did uh, the multivariate analysis, we found that actually the presence of pulmonary edema did not increase the risk of coughing in a statistical manner, while the presence of airway disease did, as well as the enlarged left atrium. So if we look at the picture on the right side of the screen, we see what is the interaction between these two. So in the absence of airway disease, we have an increased risk of coughing in the presence of an enlarged left atrium. But in the presence of air, airway disease, we got a big increase in the risk of coughing when we got an increased left atrial size. So we go back to the previous um, um, concept of the um, number of receptors that need to be stimulated in order to reach the threshold. So if we don't have irritation of the airway receptors by an airway disease, you need a very, uh, um, a very consistent pressure of the left atrium, but in the presence of airway disease, this is reached even with minimal left atrial size enlargement. Some people say that furosemide will stop coughing in this patient, and it is true sometimes, because the furosemide will reduce the left atrial pressure. But also, we've got uh, anti-inflammatory effects caused by furosemide, as well as the um, inhibition of coughing receptors. In people with, uh, uh, with asthma, we, we know that furosemide can also inhibit cough because it's protective against bronchoconstriction, but this is not a real issue in dogs because they do not have spontaneous bronchospasm. Now, the terminology of, uh, of uh, our clients is also very important because if we look at this dog here, and uh, according to the owner, the, owner, um, the, the dog was still coughing despite the treatment for a heart failure, but if you look at the video, you see that the dog is actually not coughing. So the noise that this dog is making is due to a very severe dyspnea. This is not coughing, which confirms again what we said earlier. So if you want to answer this question, why do dogs with heart disease cough? Is this because of pulmonary edema without dyspnea? Well, that's probably incorrect because all dogs with pulmonary edema will present with tachypnea and dyspnea. Or is it because pulmonary edema uh, with um, signs of dyspnea? Well, this happens but only rarely because you need such a massive amount of fluid to form in a very rapid time, in a very rapid um, onset that will flood the airways to stimulate the coffee receptors in the airways. Could it be because of uh, enlarged heart without airway disease? Uh, that's very unlikely because when we see very big heart, even in puppies with congenital cardiac defects, they tend not to cough. So the actual correct answer is the presence of a big heart with a concomitant presence of airway disease. And therefore, in this video, this uh, young boy is forced to write a hundred times on the blackboard that a coughing dog without dyspnea is not in congestive heart failure. So what should we do when we got a coughing dog in general? Should we stop the cough? When should we stop the cough? Is it a life-threatening condition? Well, if the dog is not showing any problem associated with this quality of life, so he's sleeping, he's breathing okay, he's eating and drinking and doesn't cause discomfort, in these cases, we should not um, eliminate cough because cough, as we said, is a protective mechanism and we should leave it, um, we should leave it there. But obviously, if it starts interfering with uh, uh, the quality of life, or if it is a life-threatening condition, then we should intervene by removing the primary cause. And we've got two examples here. We've got a lung tumor that should be removed surgically, if possible, or we've got another example, which is an inhaled foreign body, then again, we should remove it, because that, that will most likely eliminate the cough in this patient. But if um, the Cause of cough is a chronic inflammation, for example, we've got several other options. And the conservative management is probably the most important. We should avoid the irritants. We 
spoke earlier about cigarette smoking, for example, but other environmental factors can uh, cause cough. We should uh, promote the exercise, but possibly with a harness rather than a collar. We should control the body weight because uh, fat accumulation in the chest can promote cough and we should relieve the mucus obstruction as we saw previously in that patient with post-nasal drip syndrome. And uh, the humidification is a very, very efficient way to um, promote expectoration, so removal of this mucus from the airways. You can choose between a steam or ultrasonic humidifiers. They're relatively cheap uh, pieces of equipment. My preference goes towards ultrasonic, which is a cool mist uh, type of um, humidification because particles produced by these systems are much smaller. They can reach deeper uh, areas of um, of the respiratory tree. And uh, some people also add coupage, which is this gentle tapping of the chest to dislodge the very thick mucus from the wall of the airways. If this is not sufficient to control cough, we can consider drugs that will act at the level of the center of cough. Codeine is uh, one of them. We can also consider butorphanol. There are other drugs available on the market. Dexometerfan, for example, very commonly used in uh, human patients. But the reality is that none of these dr drugs will uh, work in the long term. And uh, sometimes, especially for dexometerfan, the result is usually very limited. And uh, we got many other drugs available that obviously um, can be considered. But the reality is that even in people, um, there are even uh, easier remedies like a simple honey um, to take before going to bed that seem to be as effective as the other drugs I mentioned earlier. Now, this doesn't mean that we should give honey to all coughing dogs, but just to um, reinforce the concept that centrally acting antitussives are not particularly effective. How about bronchodilators? Very commonly used in veterinary medicine. Well, unfortunately, they do not work in dogs. They don't work because, first of all, dogs do not have spontaneous bronchospasm. So the relaxation of the smooth muscle caused by, um, induced by the bronchodilator is not going to give any uh, significant effect in dogs. And because um, the size, the uh, caliper of the airways is already so wide, that bronchodilation is probably not going to do um, any any particular to, to provide any particular effect. And finally, we got mucolytic agents that can be used. Acetylcysteine or bromexin can be considered. They work because they break the disulfide bond that makes the molecule of mucus very thick. So by doing that, the mucus will become more fluid, it can be coughed up more easily, but there is also a risk that the mucus will go even deeper on the airway. So I personally prefer a more gentle approach, progressive approach with the humidifier. And finally, something that you should consider very uh, carefully when uh, uh, you have a coughing dog, you cannot identify the primary cause, and it does not respond um, successfully to the conservative management, inhalation steroids should be considered, and inhalation steroids, remember, should be administered with dedicated spacers like the AeroDog, which is uh, designed specifically for dogs and uh, depicted here in uh, this slide. And uh, with uh, this I have uh, finished and I hope you enjoyed this presentation and thank you very much for uh, inviting me to give this talk.